The Lord be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to our service this morning, which today comes from Holy Trinity Church, which is part of the West Hereford team on this feast day of Christ the King. Jesus Christ is King of it. He lives his life in us for the sake of the world. Jesus is alive today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sinned against you 
and against our neighbour, in the thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and I repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand for the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the living one, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall bring his king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Mike Weaver. Uh, I now live in Hereford. Uh, I'm 50 five years old in my head but unfortunately really 65 years old and Hereford is a wonderful place where we moved to years ago just purely for quality of life and certainly found it. I work as a, a reader with the West Hereford team and work within the churches, the four churches that we've got but I also uh, work at a hospice and the hospice is not what most people imagine it's a place where people are prepared where they're given love given hope uh, and prepared 
to make their life as full as possible from really from the day of diagnosis of any terminal illness all the way through and it's holistic care so we're there for the families we're there for the visitors and it's just a matter of being there and not necessarily holding a hand but being prepared to listen and hopefully reflecting love and reflecting hope to them uh, and making them feel comfortable rather than out of place. My faith is really, really important to me. Um, anybody that's ever heard me preach, I always manage to pick that word hope and love out of any any part of the Bible that I, that I read. And if you can reflect that hope and love to anybody that you walk into, that just wants to look at you, and you can be open and embracing, then that gives them the opportunity not to feel outside. And then we've got a full chaplaincy team, we've got a chapel, and whilst I'm, I'm not going to read the Bible to them, people are quite secure when we take them into the chapel and they can sit. Uh, and yes, without my faith, I think I'd be confused because you wouldn't know what the important things were in life. The hospice isn't what anybody would actually imagine and everybody, the common opinion of a hospice is that it's where one goes to die and my faith and the environment that we provide shows us that the hospice is a place where life can be lived where experience can be shared, uh, where support can be given and the maximum given and taken from, from any life for however long it takes. Uh, and my faith, it allows me not to become depressed by it, but to concentrate on the brightness that we can bring into people's lives. And that's what the hospice is about bringing brightness into lives. The second reading is from the letter of Paul's Colossians. Brothers and sisters, may you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued you from the powers of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body of the church, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult. There is a river whose streams may glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. 
God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. Come now, and look upon the words of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes wars to cease in all the world. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Please stand for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, and they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanging there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we come to celebrate the Feast of Christ the King, we are coming to the close of our Christian year. We are looking forward to Christmas, when we gather around the manger that is the Christ child's crib. This moment of celebrating Christ's ascendancy has shadows of that humble birth. And even whilst churches depict Christ as King, much like the window of this church, full of authority, majesty and power, our reading from Luke's Gospel paints a very different picture. These are the final moments of Christ's life. They herald his victory over death. And yet, that picture looks nothing like success. He might be about to ascend to that throne in heaven, but this is no coronation. This is a king who comes to power not in the vaulted halls of a cathedral or a temple, but on some long lost place outside the city. There is no stone of destiny below his feet, but only that strange rock formation we imagine gives rise to the name of the place the skull. No ladies in waiting or men at arms attend him, only the guards of the occupying force and the voices of his accusers. He is placed upon a throne of wood, hung upon a tree, and for this king of the world no orb or sceptre of power and authority are placed in his hands, only nails are driven in. No royal regalia bedecks his body. He is naked before the world as men dice for his clothes. 
A crown of thorns is light, perhaps, but draws the blood of the royal brow that bears it. For a coronation oath, perhaps those words, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. That body which was offered frankincense, myrrh and gold at birth, anointed with costly nard on the feet that washed the feet of others, is at this moment anointed only in the sour wine that trickles from a sponge. There is no infamous queue waiting for him here, only mocking voices, only distant disciples, only grieving, heartbroken mothers who will lose and gain sons at this cross. And who brought him here? The treachery of friends, the one whose feet he washed, with whom he broke bread, whom he kissed upon the cheek, and those who fled from him and denied him. The proclamation of his kingship hangs like an accusation over his head. This is the king of the Jews, while all stand and see that this is not Christ the king, but Christ the victim. And next to him, no faithful ally, no king's consort, no princess, but a criminal justly condemned next to this just man, on the right and on the left. And those immortal words from dying lips, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And what is this kingdom if this victim is its king? For Luke, this is the king whose birth was heralded not by tabloid announcements, but by those revolutionary words of his mother, Mary. Words missing from almost every school nativity, where she speaks rarely, if at all, and instead often acts in mute obedience. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and has sent the rich empty away. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. This is not a comfortable place for the rich and powerful of this world. It is profoundly uncomfortable. It is a kingdom of dislocation and relocation. This is a place where beggars are welcome at the feast and instilled in places of honour, where the rich might find themselves asking for even a drop of water. It is a kingdom of beggars and thieves, of tax collectors and adulterers, where what is dirty and foul is washed clean. The broken are made whole and the sick are healed, all by the king who could not save himself. It is a kingdom that listens to the meek, which tears down princes and kings, a kingdom where those who sit at the right hand of God probably don't look a lot like the people who sit in our pews or who we see on our TV screens. To pray thy kingdom come is to invite into our lives this upside down and topsy-turvy world. To imagine a kingdom where we might not even get a seat at the table, where we take the lowest seat if we sit at all, expecting the host to say to some faceless beggar at the door, friend, come in, have the place of honour. Where a criminal is the first subject and a tax collector sits at the right hand of God. And perhaps you know today by its other name, Stir Up Sunday, that timely reminder that Christmas puddings don't make themselves. We pray in our post-communion prayer, stir up 
O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works may by you be plenteously rewarded. In this homely tradition and the gentle words, we lose sight of that radical will. We lose sight of Christ the victim and his uncomfortable kingdom. This isn't a polite stirring up, the gentle folding in of egg whites. It is the inauguration of Christ's kingdom that is an event not to be celebrated with street parties or marked by a round of clapping on steps. It is not the stirring up of the hearts of a crowd at a concert or a football match, but the cries of revolution, of protest. This is a king who is longing to break into our world with his new kingdom, who in order to fashion this kingdom will stir up our wills, our lives, our hearts. He'll stir up society. He'll stir up the revolutionaries, the visionaries and the prophets. He'll stir them up like one stirs a fire or a witch's brew, the stirring of a crowd to cry revolution. He'll stir up the order of things until death has died, until victims look like kings and kings look like victims. This year we have seen that the transfer of power, no matter how well planned, is always disruptive. And this is the greatest transfer of power. Or is it? Christ has always been king, the firstborn of all creation. In him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He has always been king, but we have also been exiled into the kingdom of darkness. This is a reunification, a civil war, a reconciliation and re-coronation. The king, the victim, leads this liberation charge. The firstborn from the dead, in him the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is a kingdom founded not in the blood of soldiers, but in the blood of its king. It is a kingdom where all the people are refugees, transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. It is a kingdom where we cannot be sure he will sit in the places of honour, but where we can expect to be disconcerted, to be dislocated, and where the structures of this world are reimagined and relocated. We can only stand at the threshold and humbly say those immortal words, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom and hope to hear the reply. Truly, I tell you, Today you will be with me in paradise. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of all being with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for your son, Jesus, who loves us and our soldiers. Thank you, God, for our friends so we can have fun with and enjoy. Thank you, God, for the amazing planet and all its life. Thank you, God, for the beautiful beach and days out with the family and dinosaurs. We pray for leaders in the world. Give them wisdom and kindness towards everyone. We pray for the countries in the world where people are to pray. Help them and give them strength. We pray for peace in countries where we pray for peace in countries where we pray for peace in countries where there is war. We pray for people and animals where there are floods or droughts. Help us to help them by sharing what we have. We pray for people who are in or in hospital that God will heal them. We pray for people who are sad or lonely or who have lost someone they love. Please give them comfort and hope. We pray for we pray for people who are suffering because of COVID with health or money needs. We pray for people who are homeless or hungry, especially now it's getting so cold. Please give them shelter and care and food. To crown all things there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We offer a sign of peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. 
through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with the oil of gladness you have anointed Christ the Lord, your only Son, to be our great High Priest and King of all creation. As priest he offered himself once for all upon the altar of the cross, and redeemed the human race by this perfect sacrifice of peace. As King he claims dominion over all your creatures, that he may bring before your infinite majesty a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love and peace. And so with angels and archangels and all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your Spirit, Inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which was shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died and lives for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your grace and glory. Amen. Christ our King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. May the souls of the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.